In this video I'm going to talk about my experience of using the new studio display alongside the M1 Mac Mini and take a look at my new desk setup. This has definitely been a nice setup for me. I do a lot of photo editing in Lightroom and 4K video editing in Final Cut Pro. For these purposes the Mac Mini has done a fine job, although there are a few caveats that we'll come on to later. The desk itself is also a new addition to my office. I really struggled to find a desk that I liked, so in the end I made my own. The wood is American Black Walnut, which I ordered from a kitchen worktop company. The wood came untreated, so I had to apply a few coats of Danish wood oil. Then I ordered some black steel A-frame legs, which I then drilled and screwed in. I must say I'm really happy with the desk. It's nice and minimal and super solid. Walnut is a hardwood, so it's reassuringly heavy. I also love the colour and grain of the wood. The walnut and steel legs cost around £500 in total. I think this is good value as I couldn't find anything in a retail store that offered the same quality at a similar price. Also on my desk I have a 1TB Seagate hard drive that I use as a time machine backup, a Blue Yeti Nano mic I use for YouTube, a HomePod Mini and also an iPhone stand I got from a company called Lamacow. I'll leave links to all of my desktop products in the description below. If you like the Mac wallpaper I'm using then there's a download link for that too. So when I ordered the studio display, I was going to pick up the new Mac Studio to go with it, but for that it was a two month lead time. I really didn't want to wait that long, so I picked up a refurbished M1 Mini instead for just over £800. Specs wise, my M1 Mini has 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. Having a large SSD isn't so important to me, as I store most of my files online, but I would definitely recommend 16GB of RAM. 8GB of RAM isn't going to cut it if you want to run a good number of apps at the same time. I also picked up the new black Touch ID keyboard and Magic Mouse as part of my revamped desk setup. As you'd expect, all these products work harmoniously together. I also like how they tie together visually for a minimal black and silver aesthetic. Here in the UK the keyboard was 199 and the black Magic Mouse was 99 The keyboard is super thin, typing is nice and quiet, with a light and soft feel to the keys. Touch ID is a super useful feature and prevents the need to keep typing in passwords. I also appreciate the fact you can use the Touch ID button to quickly lock the Mac and put it to sleep. I know a lot of people don't like the Magic Mouse but I've personally never had an issue with them. It definitely looks good in black although I wish it had more of a matte finish. It really is super glossy and reflective. In the past I've always had MacBook Pros and iMacs but I like the modularity of this new setup. I plan to keep the display, keyboard and mouse long term and just switch out the Mac component when I feel like I need to upgrade to an M2 or M3 Mac in the future. In terms of performance, the M1 Mini has been impressive. Applications open rapidly. It also has no problem driving the 5K studio display. I'm still liking the studio display after a couple of months of use. It's definitely on the expensive side but offers solid performance and accurate colours for all my editing work. The design is also on point and will look great in any desk setup. With the M1 Mini, photo editing in Lightroom has been pretty much flawless. I process lots of RAW files from my Canon R6, batch editing, import and export have all been executed in quick fashion. For general photo editing, I don't think the Mac Studio would make much difference. With 4K video editing in Final Cut Pro, it's mostly been good news but I think for some workflows, the more powerful Mac Studio would be a better fit. I shoot all my video in 4K on my Canon R6, but I do shoot at 8-bit. This keeps file sizes down and makes editing a little easier on the Mac. At 4K 8-bit, general video editing is smooth with no choppiness. It definitely helps that Final Cut Pro is so well optimised for the M1 Apple Silicon. I also don't make a huge amount of adjustments on my videos, only a few at a time so this also helps with the general speed and smoothness of the edit. However, if you shoot at higher bit rates or resolutions, then the M1 Mac Mini may struggle, so you may be better off with the Mac Studio, which has more power alongside 32GB of RAM. Final export times for 4K video would also be a lot faster on the Mac Studio. So it really depends on your needs. For general photo editing and basic 4K video, the M1 Mini does a great job. But for more demanding video users, the Mac Studio would be a better choice and be more future-proof. Personally, whilst I don't plan to keep the M1 Mini long-term, for the time being I've been more than happy with it for my requirements. 
it also possibly offers the best bang for buck in the current Mac lineup. That concludes this look at my new desk setup and workflow. I've been Tom Hyphen. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching.